you are going to flip out today on what we are going to be talking about here at the Beyond Face Value Show. I'm Dr. Jill Wade, and today I'm excited to be talking to you about the tips and the tricks on lip flips, everything that you need to know about Botox and filler in the lips. And I am joined today by our awesome co-host, wellness extraordinaire, Laura Lewis Edwards. Yay, I'm here. Yeah. I love it. I love being with you. And my partner in crime, Dr. Jody Dana. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. I'm telling you what, this is one of the most fun things that we do other than working on teeth mm -hmm. in our dental office, isn't it, Jody? Yes. Well, and it also, it just enhances what we've done for them. Exactly. It's not done until it's all done. That's right. We always talk about the lips being so much a part or piece of someone's smile and somebody's smile design. We talk about it like it's the curtains that open up and reveal the beautiful stage behind the lips, the teeth, the smile, the designs that we hopefully give to people or that they naturally have and that we naturally get to enhance. But Laura, I know we've talked about this before. Really? There's some <laughs> really good, bad, and ugly things about lip enhancements, are there not? There really are. I, you know, uh, I lived in LA for about five years, a, a little while back, and it was, it's one of those cities. Uh, I do like LA because it's close to the water, but you know, it's probably it. <laughs> um, because, but because when it comes to aesthetics, you would see many people with really overdone lips. And you see that in different parts of the country, which is really interesting. And and so we, we're recording this show out of Dallas, Texas. And I think that in Dallas, as well as Austin, which I love as well, you guys, we, we like a, a little bit more of a natural, more subtle, like, oh, you don't look done because out there, you know, you, you would see the duck lips, the really overblown lips. You see it on television with the housewives of well, someone. Lisa Renna is a perfect example yes, of that. Yes. It was so overdone. And, and and it's not to take away from people that like that appearance. Right. Because right. there's a lot of people out there that love that look. Yes. And it's okay. Totally. But if you're wanting something a little bit more natural and mm -hmm. something that doesn't have the negative outcomes that are going to happen later in life when you over bulk that right. that's what people need to really understand the more that you're putting in there at some point in your life it's going to not be there anymore and then you're going to be left with these little flabby lips that you i think don't we've talked to. about that before exactly we, we did actually we were talking about uh, when people age and what happens to the skin and you got to think about the lips and you guys are always working You know creating these beautiful smiles and and I love what you say about the the lips being sort of that curtain that reveals that beautiful Gorgeous smile that you created with your smile makeovers, but as you age Right. I mean, you we lose. lose. The There's gravity. It's, it just flattens out. Yeah. And you can see that a lot in your philtrum, you know, those little areas right underneath your nose. Yes. As you get a little bit older and you lose that collagen up there, that flattens out. And when that flattens out, your lip gets flat. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, what you can do is you think about a child for you. What is a child's face like? The What does the skin look like? What does the mouth look like? Thinking about that full volume right there underneath the nose mm -hmm. what you're talking about. 100%. So you think about, look at a kid and they I think and of the little that. Gerber baby. Do y'all remember Gerber? Oh, yeah. There's a little Gerber baby, sweet little face. baby. With a little Cupid lip, you know, shaped bow. Cupid's bow, yes. yeah. Um, in the lips and how precious it was. And uh, I think that's what, what the standard is, is when we study, that's kind of the standard of what I think everybody is trying to get back to. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of blown up done some different things. There's some definitely different um, trends out there in lips today. I think we certainly like the trend of natural, natural. and enhanced. Yes. And we were just talking about this a second ago, and um, I know we were going to talk about it a little bit later, but let's talk about it right this second. And that is what age, who is doing this? So the trend is, is that a lot of these lip flips are happening and trending in very young adults. Yes. Very young adults. And I also feel like some of my older patients think it's not for them, mm -hmm. which is absolutely not true. It's a great trend for an older lip look that comes out very, very natural. So how about, can I, I'm going to ask then, so what is a lip flip? Well, Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, there's a big difference between yeah. a lip flip and lip fillers. While you're still using some sort of filler in the flip portion of it, 
you're also utilizing Botox, which we all know Botox, and quite frankly, I love Botox, and I'll never not have Botox in my Amen. head. It makes me feel better about myself, and it makes me do that. But with a lip flip, you're adding some Botox just above the lips, and that kind of makes that a little bit sleepy up there so it mm -hmm. relaxes this muscle so it's not curving your lip under uh -huh. and then you take a thinner filler and you put it into the vermilion borders or just the very edges of your teeth as opposed to it being bulk in the lip itself right so you're not like so over, over time filling. your lip just kind of flips up because oh. those muscles have been relaxed right and and i have to say i am a fan as well of yes i have botox it. and okay. fillers mm -hmm. but i've not done a lip flip and i didn't really know much about yes. it you know and, like, and i kind of go oh gosh i'm not sure you know if i'd want to do it but i can see as one ages as you your mouth does draw down it's a just that it is the gra it is the old gravity it right is. as well as just habitual i guess with the gravity and habitually maybe not smiling as much or whatever it is. Well, we all right? know where the where the lines and everything come from. Yeah. You know, whether you're a smoker or you drink a lot through a straw, any of that puckering stuff is going to create the lines that are above your lip. And getting back to what you just were saying about, you know, we have this preconceived notion of what lips should look like. And we know that it's been blown out of proportion a lot with the people that like the bigger looking lips. Yes. This the is very for something full, filled, very filled, filled full lips. lips. Yeah. This is to enhance. This isn't to bulk you out or to make you look fake or mm -hmm. to make your lips look like ducks. <laughs> this yeah. is just a soft, subtle little flip that gives that volume that looks really nice. I just think it's so interesting. I, you know, how did anybody figure that out? It's like <laughs> <laughs> to relax those muscles, right. then you could have that really nice, which I hadn't mm -hmm. heard that explanation before mm -hmm. about how it smoothed out. Okay. And then you fill the outer lining of the lips. That's great. So you're not going to look you're, like. It's, it's instead of bulking the lip itself it's just the edges nice. and then they just round so nicely up at the top and so you both have had it yeah. and i i would never, never know. know but it just looks really pretty and soft and listen soft. i just have to say real quick we'll have people listening or watching the show and they're going to be like well you know we should embrace aging and you know we don't you know, uh, okay I want to embrace the process of maintenance. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to maintain a more youthful look. I want to, I would like very much to look as young as I feel inside. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think that a lot of people feel that way. And they're talking about the older person, a person of a certain age, um, over 40, over 50, um, and beyond that might be nervous about, right. you know, but then, you know, all of a sudden great yeah. entry point. I yes. really do. If I somebody do hasn't done much or mm -hmm. is curious, I think this is a really great entry point because you can really control the subtlety of it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to go huge. You can always do to more. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think I love about that. I know many women will complain about when they apply their lipstick that if they have a lot of fine lines mm -hmm. right at the border it like where you put your, mm -hmm. your 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 lip pencil yeah okay that this then bleeds their oh, lipstick yes. right yes. so when you add right here specifically what does it do it really helps to fill that back out again mm -hmm. not allow that bleeding lipstick kind of face that, okay mm -hmm. and and i have to dive in because we talked about this on a previous episode about the straw yes. and with the popularity of the big what are those the called Yeti stanley's the stanley stanley mm -hmm. cups yes. with the, the and straw so you always see people you know yeah. and so it. what's going on with the straw what's happening to their mouth so you're you're creating you're right. creating pursing. grooves and lines right. so when you do that mm -hmm. you're going to end up with yeah. pursing lines above your lip like if a you're smoker. a smoker right it's mm -hmm. the same exact thing it's doing that constant motion that allows it that is. to get it's there some of its mentality it right? is like yeah. if you're not happy yeah and you're constantly piercing your lips at your kids mm -hmm. yeah. or your husband or, <laughs> or your team members it's like you you gotta smile right we gotta the face and the muscles 
are going to follow that form. So if you're constantly, like you said, going down towards, you know, drinking through a straw or yeah. just not smiling and not being happy, right. it's the form is going to follow that. Right. And so the also the trend on your girls, my girls, you know, our teenagers and our young adult daughters, mm -hmm. the, the trend on, you know, taking selfies and and photographing themselves with is what their first their lips. first their lips. first oh, lips. that's right. why they like, do it they're doing it with out. their mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how they're right. like it's they're exactly. doing it with their muscles exactly yeah. that's why they're very intrigued with a true lip flip mm -hmm. well you asked a minute ago what the age for this was right and the youngest person that i've done a lip flip on was 18. i just mm -hmm. did one on my hygienist daughter Mm -hmm. And she had very thin upper lip. It wasn't that she needed the volume or she needed it to be fuller. She just needed that lip, the upper lip to look a little bit more enhanced. And we did it on her. She's 18. And then I just got finished doing it on an older lady. She's 72. Mm -hmm. It's her first dive into oh. having Botox oh, and filler. So we've been really titrating her because mm -hmm. she came in with some expectations that she didn't want to appear fake. And I took a bunch of pre-op photos and we did her Botox mm -hmm. and then it wasn't enough. So we added a little bit more and now we've gotten it to where she loves what she is, but her lips look so good. Oh, and so she's good. so happy about her lips. And if I'm not mistaken, we have a picture of that we that we're do. just we're about to share. Her, we are. We're going to show you the before and afters of the young one versus the older one. Oh, so. yeah. Yes. Okay. So I, I know we had a, we always have pre-production meetings to talk about a lot of stuff. Like we, maybe we could talk about this and talk about that. And, and the one thing I want to ask you both about uh, fillers as dentists because you're always you know that's where that's our zone on, right mm -hmm. but you can tell something about like mm -hmm. if the filler is not there's lumps and bumps or something in right. the lips or what is what is that because i think i know we, we talked oh, yes. about that dr so Wade. we've been practicing dentistry for almost 30 years now mm -hmm. and so trust me when we first began i I don't even know if fillers were around. I don't think they were around for the honestly, lips back I then. Think, I don't think. I so. want to say it was probably ten years into my career before I even felt something different in somebody, and I was like, "What is that?" that? Oh. Like it felt so foreign uh -huh. because the original fillers, where they were getting placed and how they were getting placed, and it would create really big lumps and bumps in the lip itself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so when we were in the mouth, we could feel that with our fingers. And when we were doing our oral cancer screens, we could feel things. Oh. And imagine lumps and bumps in other areas of your body, right. let's just say. Does it look good? Do you look flat? Do you look right? Mm -hmm. No, you look no. lumpy and bumpy, That's right? Cellulite. Uh -huh. That's and cellulite. No one loves and nobody cellulite. loves that. No. So if you're not careful, the same thing can happen in your lips. You you get too much in one area and you look bulbous or un It's not it's, just it's not, not well defined. Yeah. It doesn't look or appear natural. And and guys, we all know that everything that we do in life, it, it gets better. Mm -hmm. So back when we first were finding out about the fillers, you you had your experience with that. I actually have a patient that had lip a lip implant where it was this piece of plastic that just was one piece that just went into the vermilion border and literally the poor lady could only open her mouth just a very little bit because it was all tied together oh so my gosh I, we've evolved we everything have. in the world evolves mm -hmm. we're learning what botox what fillers mm -hmm. the different the the volume i was gonna say it, it's many different kinds now so when it first started there was only one thickness mm -hmm. of a filler mm -hmm. one one thing for everyone one thing for every aspect in your face be it your cheeks mm -hmm. you know around your mouth or your lips well it was too thick for the lips mm -hmm. now thank goodness they've come up with different volumes of fillers so mm -hmm. we have lighter thinner fillers to kind of sculpt and do more details in the lips where you have maybe a the, choice of the, something a little thicker, thicker for your cheeks for your cheeks or even for the bulk of your lip itself if uh -huh. you're wanting to add a little bit of volume yeah. but from a flip perspective you want the thinnest one up there because imagine putting a thick volume in the edges of your lip what you would look like when that was 
before right. finished. Right. So for all of those people that are out there thinking about this as something that they want to do, mm -hmm. you need to do your research. You need to find some lips that you like. And then you need to see somebody that you feel comfortable with to accomplish those desires. Because right. the last thing that you want is for someone to have their preconceived notion as to what you should look like. Oh, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Totally yes, great absolutely. point. I know, I know injectable fillers, um, you know, because I'm a nerd and I love all this kind of thing about chemistry, but I know that uh, typically they're based from, uh, they're made out of a hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid. And which is a natural occurring substance in your body. Mm -hmm. uh, and like in your eyes, I think your eyes are like almost all hyaluronic it acid, is. right? And so, so to think about that, that you can put fillers in, but if there's too much put in, you can also dissolve, right? Yes, you, you can. So, and there are some fillers that are not so natural that you can't dissolve. Or are you even like putting, an, like that type of thing you're talking about they used to do with the plastic thing or whatever it was. I, I I'd be so scared. I, I was talking to an injector uh, uh, friend of mine. Uh, she does it all day long. This is in Santa Fe where I live. And um, I don't go to her for that kind of thing. But I noticed she wasn't talking very well. Like oh. she, her, and she even, and then she said, listen, I'm not speaking very well because I kind of made a mistake <laughs> with, she did the lip flip, but then put, there was something about the balance of what she mm -hmm. did. So she was kind of mm -hmm. experimenting on herself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it, and it was impeding the way she was speaking. Mm -hmm. And that's something to really think about as well. You think, well, I want to look much beautiful, Botox. but <laughs> right. I want to look pretty. But, you know, you need to be sure you're really doing something that's balanced. And I know both of you are, because you're, you're wonderful dentist, cosmetic dentist, you have to be careful about what you do. And you want to make sure that you can do a little at first, like you said, 100%. right? 100%. Start small. Start small. Start small. Start small. Take some pictures. We take pictures before we do. and after. We take pictures of the sheet that shows us exactly where we even injected. So uh -huh. every time that patient comes in, we have a reference point to where we've put it before. Yeah. So we don't go overboard, especially if we've accomplished what the patient really loves. Right. Right. Absolutely. And one last thing for me personally, one of the sides of my lips is not the same as the other side. So in situations like this, when you get somebody who can really see that subtle detail, right. you can actually add more on one side versus the other side and get your symmetry back together again. Yes, and creating symmetry. Mm -hmm. And speaking of symmetry, I know we as humans are built to, uh, we think, they've done studies with babies that they put like um, photos of people on the screen and the baby's like, I don't know, they're sucking on a pacifier or something like that. And they're measuring the baby's interest and satisfaction. And what they found was that people with more symmetrical faces, the babies were more attracted to that. There's a primitive aspect to who we are. And if they weren't, if it was asymmetrical, they weren't interested as much. So it's sort of like the uh, idea of beauty, if you will, is really rooted primitively in us based in symmetry, symmetry, facial symmetry. So I love that you brought that up because we're all not perfect and no. one, one side of our face is different than the other, but to create that gorgeous symmetry does something on a very yes. subtle level for us to go, why? Wow, there's something about that person I really find attractive. Absolutely. Exactly. And, and that's what makes coming to the dentist. If you're going through cosmetic rehab, whether you're getting veneers or crowns or full mouth reconstruction, Invisalign. don't Invisalign, whatever you choose to do, your lips and your face is the final piece of it. So mm -hmm. you have these beautiful teeth and these beautiful smiles. And if you're missing just a little bit, this is just the crown on top of what you finished up. I love that. Great Absolutely. Point. Well, I think that was a perfect way to end this session. <laughs> but I want to tease. Let's tease a future episode. Okay. We're going to be talking about what? Fillers for other parts of the face? Absolutely. Like cheeks. We're and... not done talking about the aesthetics of <laughs> no. anything. Chin, mm -hmm. cheekbones. Yes. Noses, cheekbones, yeah. you name it. Because, again, just like you just said, it isn't just one thing, Right. Mm -hmm. And everybody has their little thing. We've yeah. talked about how people sleep yeah. and how one side will get flattened out over the years and collagen. Mm -hmm. So much to talk about, sure. so much more in the future. So 
keep watching us on the Beyond Face Value Show. And I just want to thank my guest today. Uh, thank you for letting us all flip everybody out about our topic. <laughs> So and uh, we are looking forward to one of our next episodes about smile makeovers. Also, to help us grow and expand our reach, be sure to like and subscribe to this show on YouTube or your favorite podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever you prefer. Just remember, it's time to live your legacy now. I'm Dr. Jill Wade, and this has been the Beyond Face Value Show. Until next time.